In this video, we will learn how to write a piecewise function for an absolute value graph. So when we look at this um, absolute value function, we see that it has two branches to it. So when I look at this branch that's over here on the left, I can imagine what if it extended beyond this. Um, so the slope seems to be, um, let's see, boom, boom, boom. This is what seems to be happening. So it seems to be going down one over two. So down one over two, down one over two. All right, if this were an entire line, it would continue like this. So what is the equation of that line? Because that's going to give me the first part of my piecewise function. So this would be y equals. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking about good old y equals mx plus b. The slope is the down 1 over 2 that I was doing. So because it's down 1 over 2, that's like negative 1 over 2, negative 1 half. That's the slope. Now the y-intercept, um, we can see that if I continue this line, it would hit the y-axis right here. That's negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So this would be negative 4. Now, so I'm just going to clean this up and just write negative 1 half x minus 4 instead of plus negative 4. All right, so we have negative 1 half x minus 4. So that's the equation of the left-hand side of the absolute value function. Now, because this is a piecewise function, all right, we don't have the entire line y equals negative 1 half x minus 4. We just have this portion of it. And notice it stops right here. Um, but what x value is this? Well, look right here. Here's the x value where it changes from being the left branch, and, and then it becomes the right branch after that as it bends upward. But this is an x value of negative 2. So that's important because for my piecewise function, I'm going to say it's going to be this equation if the x values are less than or equal to negative 2. And I got that negative 2 from um, the x value where this branch ends. Now, let me change colors to make clear that everything I do now is going to be the right-hand side of this function. Now, this equation is going to be easier to write because we already know that um, this slope is going down 1 over 2. So, of course, this slope will be going up 1 over 2. So these slopes for an absolute value function will always be the same, except for one of them is negative and one of them is positive. So this will be 1 half x. Um, now, what's the y-intercept? Well, here is the y-intercept right here. It, it touches the y-axis at negative 2. So that means 1 half x minus 2. OK, we've already indicated the, the uh, point where it changes from the first branch to the second branch has an x value of negative 2. The only, so I'm still going to be dealing with negative 2 again. But because we're going to the right this time, we will say greater than negative 2. Now, notice on the first function I said less than or equal to, and then on the second function I said greater than. Um, how did I know to make the first one less than or equal to and the second one greater than? It doesn't matter. I could have made the first one less than and the second one greater than or equal to. Um, the reality is w the um, the second one begins where the first one ends, so it doesn't matter. Just pick one to be or equal to, and uh, you, whichever one you want. 
Now, because this is a piecewise function, I'm not going to put y equal to twice. Instead, I'm going to put a brace like this, and I'm going to give it a name like f of x. So that's it. This is the piecewise function that matches that absolute value graph. All right, I'm going to do that again, but hopefully this time I can do it a little bit faster. Let's see, do I need to zoom out? So first I'm going to do the left branch, which goes like this. Okay. All right, write a piecewise function. So, um, what is the slope of this? Let me put some dots on here. So, dot, dot, dot. All right, so it seems to be going up 3 over 1. So, that means when I write this function, the slope is 3 because up 3 over 1. Now, the y-intercept is a little bit trickier because of the way it goes off of the graph. Now, I can probably guess um, that it's going to go, I see that it's going down 3 over 1. So, I can, I can figure out that if I go down 3 over 1, one more time, it'll hit the y-axis. And that's going to be at negative 13. But, you know, sometimes that's going to be really difficult because it won't be that close. In fact, when we do the right-hand branch, it would be really difficult to estimate where it's going to hit the y-axis. So, is there another way? Yes. Um, let's see, how can, we, how can we do this? Well, we can use the vertex to find the y-intercept. And here's how. All right, the vertex point is, let, let's see, what's the x and y? Um, this is over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it is up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the vertex is the point 7, 8. Now, I, I need an equation for this line. And I'm thinking y equals mx plus b. Now the 7 and the 8 are an x and a y that I can use. So I'll put the 8 here. Now the slope, the rise over run, this is up 3 over 1, so we know that the slope is 3 and the x is 7. So we can use this to find b. So this is 8 is equal to 21 plus b. So then it's just a matter of subtracting 21 from both sides. 8 minus 21 is negative 13. So that tells me that the b value is negative 13. All right, so that's how we could find the b value. So y equals 3x minus 13. Now we need the condition. All right, when is it the first branch? if the x values are, okay, again, uh, well, look at the vertex. What's the x value here? All right, what is the x value? Well, we already counted this up a minute ago. It is 7. So this is an x value of 7. So that's the number that we're going to be dealing with is the number 7. This first branch is to the left of 7. So that's where we're going to say x is less than or equal to 7 because it's going to the left. Um, now let's do the right-hand side. All right, we can do this much quicker. The slope will be the same, but instead of positive, this will be a negative 3. So this will be y equals negative 3x. We just need to find that y-intercept again. All right, I am just going to erase this and use the space. I'm going to recycle. Uh, 
Again, we can use the vertex to find the y-intercept of this blue line. Now, imagine extending this blue line. All right, eventually it would hit the y-axis, like somewhere way, way up here. It's going to be somewhere near 20. Okay, um, but it would be hard to guess, so let's use y equals mx plus b. And we're looking for the b. So um, for the x and the y, we can use the 8 and the 7. The m, this slope is negative 3, remember? All right, we know it's going to be negative 3. So we have negative 3 um, times 7 plus b. So that's going to be 8 is equal to negative 21 plus b. So to get b by itself now, I'm going to add 21 to both sides. So that's going to give me 29. All right, so I'm going to put a plus 29. If x is greater than 7. Of course, these will be the same number because the pink side ends at 7 and then the blue side begins at 7. Again, it doesn't matter which one you make or equal to and which one you just leave plain. All right, and I am going to go back and clean this up and use the proper notation for a piecewise function, which is use a brace and call it f of x. So that's number two. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, what's the slope here? Well, it seems to be going up one over one. So that would be y equals x, all right, slope of 1. Now we just need the y-intercept. Now this one I could figure out pretty easily by extending the line. So the y-intercept would hit right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that'll be x plus 6 if x is less than or equal to. Now, what's the x value here where it changes? Um, let's see, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In fact, this vertex is negative 5, comma, 1. All right, but that x value of negative 5 is what we need for the condition. All right, now let's do the other side. All right, so of course this side is going down one, right one. So that's going to be y equals negative x. Now the y-intercept is, is right here, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll put minus 4. And we'll just switch this to greater than negative 5. And that's it. Let's just use our proper notation now. Let's make this a brace and call it f of x. OK, let's do number four. OK, so here's the vertex is at 3 comma Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3 comma negative 6. So keep that in the back of your mind. Now let's do the slope of the left-hand side. Um, let's see, it seems to hit the grid lines first right here. So that's um, up 4 over 1. Okay, so let's see. So this is what's happening. Now the slope. As I go from left to right, it's going down 4, right 1. Down 4, right 1. So that's negative 4 over 1. Or just negative 4. 
Okay, so that would give me y equals negative 4x. Now, what's the y-intercept? Well, this is the y-intercept right here. Let me see, does it hit right on the lines? Yeah, so this is the y-intercept right here. Um, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So negative 4x plus 6. So that's the left branch. Now the right branch should be quick and easy. Um, we know the slope will be, um, instead of down 4 over 1, it's up 4 over 1. So this will be just a positive 4. So this will be y equals positive 4x. All we need is the y-intercept. Now, if I extended the line, it's going to go off the grid. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b to find the y-intercept. So here I go. y equals mx plus b. Remember, we have the vertex of 3 comma negative 6. That's an x and a y. So that's why I will have negative 6 equals the slope for the blue line is positive 4. So I'll go ahead and put 4 for m. And then x is 3. And we're looking for b. So this will be negative 6 is equal to 12 plus b. Subtract 12 from both sides. And you get a uh, negative 18. So that means this will be 4x minus 18. Um, now the conditions. It'll be the left branch if x is less than or equal to. And of course, the x value here is 3. All right, it'll always be the x value of the vertex. And for the blue function, we will say if x is greater than 3. So that's it. All right, I will just use proper piecewise notation now by drawing a brace and calling this f of x. All right, there are a few more problems that need to be done but I'm going to put that in a separate video. So in the next video, we will practice evaluating piecewise functions for various values of x.